to Carmelo Garcia. Carmelo, thanks for the time as always. So, first of all, you know, there's been a lot of controversy about Vision 2020. And uh, let's start here. I mean, there's been a lot of rumors circulating, first of all, that there was a improper eviction of some kind in one of the Hoboken Housing Authority meetings. Uh, so could we first just address what exactly happened? Was there an eviction? Uh, and where is this uh, report stemming from? Pretty much there was a cease and desist notice where in the lease agreement of tenant, it says that you require written permission from the housing authority to post up, you know, any type of uh, paraphernalia flyers. And we were told that there was an eviction notice. There was never any eviction notice issued from management to that tenant who was basically putting out improper flies. But a cease and desist notice did go out telling them that they have to refrain from that because as part of the obligations, they must comply with the requirements of their lease. So they were definitely in violation, but that doesn't require an eviction notice. What it requires is a cease and desist notice, which is our first step in issuing a notice to cease. And it was only one tenant that we're aware of that now is a part of an investigation from the Hoboken Police Department because they were also, as you read, the NAACP, someone fraudulently uh, cut and pasted their logo and put this flyer out along with that flyer that basically stated that the NAACP was against a Vision 2020, which was that that was never the case. And the president of the NAACP went and filed a police complaint with the police department because that was fraud. And unfortunately, that is what we've been dealing with. So I've made it very clear that it seems to be an apparent attempt to scare, divide, and confuse the community. If that person or those persons are genuinely interested in what Vision 2020 is all about, they should be here today, listen to the presentation, be a part of the conversation, and know that no one is being displaced. Yeah. So, now another thing that some of your critics have been saying about Vision 2020 is that it's not actually a comprehensive plan and that it really hasn't been updated much since 2010 when it was created. So, you know, could you speak to that? Could you just tell us some of the details of the plan and why that may or may not be the case here? I would hope that the first question you ask them is, how long is the plan? It's 112 pages, seven chapters, very comprehensive, where we won an award by the New Jersey Future Organization, and the award was defined as the Comprehensive Revitalization Strategic Award, 2011 Smart Growth Award. So when folks talk about you know it not being updated, the data doesn't change. The PNA that was conducted, the physical needs assessment, the data never changes. The concept of its phasing doesn't change, and the visioning process is what we've always talked about in the actual plan. So when you look at each section and chapter of the plan, you will know that this is an in-depth, comprehensive plan. So until someone starts to read the 112-page plan and recognize that the two amendments that came about was uh, version one and two, and that was scaling it down from its original strategic capacity in concept to then a concrete number that the Board of Commissioners can live with. The Board of Commissioners have dictated every step of the way on what it is, as policymakers, they can live with. This is not the executive director's decision, Carmelo Garcia. This is the Board of Commissioners. That was their role. And unanimously, they have continuously approved to allow this process and plan to progress in its action and what it was intended to do. All right. So now to that point, uh, I understand things are at a bit of a standstill because until uh, the council votes in favor of the project, you guys can't really proceed any further. Is that basically what it is? Well, so far, we unfortunately were disqualified for infeasibility when we submitted an application because we did not have the resolution of need. It is a requirement under the 9% and 4% tax credit program. That is why we continue to ask the city council and the mayor to please support this plan. It is the right thing to do. And at the end of the day, until we have have this resolution of need, we will continue to be able to be in a deficient position with this plan and our application. That is the unfortunate aspect about it. So if we hopefully remove the politics and focus on the people and the progress and see this plan for what it's really worth, its merits of really uh, enhancing the living conditions and improving the quality of life and preparing our families and our community for another 
disaster if it were to happen. And that's what this is all about. All right, Carmelo. Well, again, we appreciate the time. I thank you for uh, your comprehensive answers. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate Hudson County TV covering uh, tonight's event and allowing us the opportunity to educate everyone out there viewing uh, today's video. All right. You're very welcome. Thank you, my brother.